In this video, we will conclude by looking at truth. And our graph is said to be circuit free if and only if it has circuits. A graph is called a tree if and only if it is circuit free and it is connected. A trivial tree is a graph that consists of a single vertex. And a graph is called a forest if and only if it is circuit free and not connected. So here we have four examples of trees. Obviously this one here is the trivial tree. And here, these are examples of non-trees. Now the graphs in A, B, and C all have circuits, while the graph in D is not connected. Notice there's also no circuit in D, so this would be a far. These three have a circuit. Okay. Now, during orientation week, a college administers a mathematics placement exam to all entering students. The exam consists of two parts, and placement recommendations are made as stated by the tree shown. What course should be recommended for a student who scored nine on the first part? And seven on the second. So we have to look. Score in part one. Student scored a nine. That would follow this branch right here. Then scored seven on the second. Seven is greater than six. That's up here. So the student should be recommended for math 110. Right now, properties of trees for any positive integer n, any tree with n vertices has n minus 1 edges, regardless of its shape. Any connected graph with n vertices and n minus 1 edges is a tree. As a consequence, if even just one new edge is added to a tree, the resulting graph has a circuit. Every connected graph has a subgraph that is a tree. And for any positive integer n, any graph with n vertices and fewer than n minus 1 edges is not connected. All right, we're going to go about proving this, some of these. All right, first, we're going to need this lemma. Any tree that has more than one vertex has at least one vertex of degree 1. Now, let T be a particular but arbitrarily chosen tree that has more than one vertex. Pick a vertex V of T and let E be an edge that is incident on V. Such an edge is guaranteed to exist, since if there were no edges, then V would be isolated, which contradicts the fact that T is connected. If the degree of V is 1, then we're done. If, however, the degree of this vertex is greater than 1, then we choose E prime to be an edge incident on V, such that E is not equal to E prime. And this is guaranteed to exist because the degree is greater than one. Now let V prime be the vertex at the other end of E prime. Such a V prime is guaranteed to exist because E prime cannot be a loop.
Now, if the degree of this new vertex is 1, we're done. If it's larger than 1, then we repeat the process we just did, except now in V prime. Now, because the set of vertices of T is finite, and because T is circuit free, we will eventually be able to find a vertex of degree 1, and the proof is complete. Okay, now we look at new definition. Let T be a tree. If T has at least two vertices, then a vertex of degree 1 in T is called a leaf or a terminal vertex. And a vertex of degree greater than 1 in T is called a branch or an inter vertex. The unique vertex in a trivial tree also happens to be called a leaf. And what we want to do here is find all leaves and branches. Now remember, leaves are vertices that have degree 1. All right, so V8 is a leaf. V0 is a leaf. V7 is a leaf, V5 is a leaf, V2 is a leaf, and V4 is a leaf. Now for the branches, V6, V1, and V3. Right, remember, leaves have degree 1, branches have a degree larger than 1. For any positive integer n, any tree with n vertices has n minus 1 edges. Let t be any tree with 1 vertex then T has zero edges since it cannot contain any loops. Now suppose for some positive integer K, any tree with K vertices has K minus one edges. We wish to show that any tree with K plus one vertices has K edges. Now let T be a tree with k plus 1 vertices. Since k has to be a positive integer, we know that k plus 1 has to be at least 2, which means that t would have more than one vertex. So by the lemma we've just proven, t must contain a vertex of degree 1. Call it v. Also, T must contain at least one other vertex than V. Thus, there must be an edge, call it E, that connects V to the rest of T. Now, define a subgraph T prime of T so that V of T prime is V of T minus the vertex V. Now, remember that was the vertex of degree 1, and let e of t prime equal e of t minus e, right, and, edge, and that edge, e, is the one that is connected to v. Then the following must be true. The number of vertices of t prime is k, right, because we're taking out one of the vertices. t prime must be circuit-free since T is circuit-free, and removing an edge and a vertex cannot create a circuit. And third, T prime is connected. Therefore, T is a tree with K vertices. And so by hypothesis, T prime must contain K minus one edges.
well, we got t prime just by taking away one edge from t. And so it follows that t must contain k edges as desired. And so the proof is complete. Now, if G is any connected graph, C is any circuit in G, and any one of the edges of C is removed from G, then the graph that remains is connected. Let's suppose G is a connected graph, C is any circuit in G, and E is an edge in the circuit C. Form a subgraph of G form a subgraph g prime of g by removing e from g then the set of vertices of g prime would be the same as the set of vertices in g and the set of edges in g prime would now be the set of edges in g minus that e we must now show that g prime is connected let's suppose that u and w are any two vertices of g prime to show that G prime is connected, we have to show that there exists a walk from U to W. Right, remember, that's what it means to be connected. You can get to any vertex from any other vertex in the graph by a finite walk. Now, since G and G prime have the same vertex set, U and W are also vertices in G. And thus, there is a walk W from U to W, since G is connected. Now, if E is not an edge in that walk, then W is the walk from U to W in G prime, and we are done. However, if E is an edge in that walk in W, then W cannot be a walk in G prime since E has been removed. We will now denote C as V0, E1, V1, E2, V2, so on and so forth until we get to EN, VN. Note that since C is a circuit, this VN here must be the same as this V0. Now, E is one of the edges denoted as E sub K in this circuit. Then W contains either the sequence VK minus one EK VK or VK EK VK minus one. If it contains this first one, connect VK minus one to VK by the counterclockwise walk W prime defined as VK minus one EK minus one vk minus 2, so on and so forth, to v naught, to en, along en to vn minus 1, so on and so forth, ek plus 1 vk. Now, in other words, we're going the long way around e sub k, so we don't have to take e sub k. Now, if w contains this is VK, EK, VK minus 1. We'll connect VK to VK minus 1 by taking the clockwise walk, W, W, W double prime, defined as VK, EK plus 1, VK plus 1, so on and so forth, VN, E1, V1, E2, so on and so forth, EK minus 1, VK minus 1. Now, what we do is we're going to patch either W prime or W double prime into W to form a new walk from U to W. Right, what, what do we mean by this? Well, to patch W prime to W, start with the section of W from U to VK minus 1. Then take W prime from VK minus 1 to VK. And finally, take the section of W from VK to W. If this new walk still contains an occurrence of E, just repeat the above process until all occurrences are eliminated. The result will be a walk from U to W that does not contain E and is hence a walk 
in G prime. So we've shown that such a walk will exist, which shows that G prime is connected. And so the proof is complete. For any positive integer n, if g is a connected graph n vertices and n minus 1 edges, then g is a tree. Let n be a positive integer, and suppose g is a connected graph that has n vertices and n minus 1 edges. Suppose that g is not circuit-free. Let c be a circuit in g. Then by the previous lemma, an edge of C can be removed from G to obtain a graph G prime that is connected. If G prime has a circuit, repeat this process by removing an edge of the circuit from G prime to form a new connected graph. And we continue this process until a graph G double prime is obtained that is connected and circuit free. Thus, G double prime is a tree. Since no vertices were removed from G to form G double prime, G double prime has n vertices. Thus, G double prime has n minus 1 edges. However, at least one edge was removed from G to obtain G double prime. So G double prime can contain no more than n minus two edges. This is a contradiction. Hence, G must be circuit free. And so G is a tree. And the proof is complete. A rooted tree is a tree in which there is one vertex that is distinguished from the others and is called the root. The level of a vertex is the number of edges along the unique path between it and the root. The height of a rooted tree is the maximum level of any vertex of the tree. Given the root or any branch V of a rooted tree, the children of V are all those vertices that are adjacent to V and are one level farther away from the root than V. If W is a child of V, then V is called the parent of W. And two distinct vertices that are both children of the same parent are called siblings. Given two distinct vertices, V and W, if V lies on the unique path between W and the root, then V is an ancestor of W, and W is a descendant of V. Right, as an illustration, we have this tree right here. Now, as we can see, there is one vertex that is distinct distinguishable from all the others, and that is this vertex right here. This is the root. It will then branch off to three. Right, this is level one. Because all of the vertices are just one edge away from the root. Now, if we look down at the next branch, it's level two, right? Because all the vertices are two edges away. Now, if we look here, V and W are both adjacent to U. So V is a child of U and W is a child of U. U is the parent of V and W. And hence, V and W would be siblings. Now, all of these vertices would be descendants of U, right? because you can get to all the vertices along a walk from U. 
which makes you an ancestor for all of these vertices. All right, so we have a tree shown here. We are asked the following. First, what is the level of V5? So V5 is down here. So one, two. It is level two. The level of V0, which is V0, right? It's the root. What is the height? So we want the highest level, right? So one, two, three. The highest level is three, and so that would be the height. So if I just start writing this down. Level V5 is two, zero, height is three. The children of V3. So we look and we go, okay. V6 and V5 are directly connected. So V3 has two children, V5 and V6. What is the parent of V2? All right, so V2 is a child of V0. So V0 is the parent. What are the siblings of V8? Well, V8 has a parent, V4. So do V9 and V7. So the siblings are V7 and V9. What are the descendants of V3? All right, so descendants of V3 are any vertex you can get to along a walk from V3. So V5, V6, and V10. How many leaves are there? Now, remember a leaf has a degree of one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So there are six of them. A spanning tree for a graph G is a subgraph of G that contains every vertex of G and is a tree. And so a proposition on spanning trees. Every connected graph has a spanning tree. And any two spanning trees for a graph have the same number of edges. Here we prove only the first one. Suppose G is a connected graph. If G is circuit-free, then G is its own tree and we are done. If not, then G has at least one circuit, call it C1. By a previous lemma, the subgraph of G obtained by removing an edge from C1 is connected. If this new subgraph is circuit free, then it is a spanning tree and we are done. If not, then it has at least one circuit, call it C2. And as before, we can remove successive edges from circuits until eventually we obtain a connected circuit free subgraph T of G. Now, T must contain every vertex of G because we remove no vertices in this process. Thus, T is a spanning tree for G. And the proof is complete. And we conclude this video 
by finding all of the spanning trees for the graph shown here. Right now, notice that we have one circuit. V2 to V1 to V4 and back to V2. So what we do is if we remove any edge from this circuit, we have a tree. So there are three spanning trees. Right, the first spanning tree can be obtained by removing this edge right here. So let me redraw it. All right, so this was the original graph. So if we remove this edge, there's a spanning tree. Okay, now if we go back, redraw that edge. Now let's remove this edge. There's a spanning tree. back in. We can also remove this edge and we now have a spanning tree. So those were the three spanning trees. All right, if you want to draw them out on your own, just go back a little ways in the video to when I erased each edge, right, pause the video and then draw it out and then continue. That concludes our video on trees and it also happens to conclude this video series.